This is my sheet metal cutter showdown. And what I'm gonna do in this showdown video is the same thing I do in all my showdowns, which is show you a bunch of different tools, just like way too many tools that are used to do the same thing, cut sheet metal, but they do it in different ways. We will start out with the most basic of sheet metal cutting technologies, the snips. Then we will move on to the nibbler. This is a power nibbler. You can get a manual nibbler, but if you've used a manual nibbler, you know that you'd rather use a power nibbler. Then we've got the power shears. Then we're gonna have to talk about the grinder. And I got a couple grinders out because you can cut sheet metal with different grinder blades. We're gonna hit the circular saw next. Circular saw is actually a pretty effective tool for cutting sheet metal. After that, we're gonna hit the oscillating tools, multi-tools, whatever you guys call these things, as well as the jigsaw. And we'll end with the plasma cutter. So that's the lineup of tools on my bench. Let's get into cutting some metal. And I'm not a big safety kind of guy. If you're gonna be cutting metal, you should probably get yourself some cut resistant gloves. You might also wanna try out some ear protection. A couple of these methods, in particular, the circular saw are just incredibly noisy. And for some of these methods, you will want eye protection. Cover up the eyes and possibly the face. Metal will be flying. And if you are fastidious at all, you know, someone who likes stuff done all like fancified, you might also wanna pick up a deburring tool for your edges. All right, first up, we're gonna go with the most basic, elementary, simple way to cut sheet metal, which is with a pair of snips. If you've got yellow snips, they are designed to cut pretty much straight ahead. If you got red snips, and this, this isn't red snips, this is a red bag, but it's, it's red, okay? So if you have red snips, they will cut kind of to the left. And if you have green snips, again, it's, it's a green pencil, but you know, they're green snips. Imagine we got green snips right here. Green snips will cut kind of to the right. So it's sort of like a stoplight, right? You got the green on the bottom, the yellow and the red, but it's sideways and it's not a stoplight, it's a bunch of snips. I don't know what's up with these ones. They are blue handled. This is like before the stoplight came into existence. All right, let's test out the snips. And what you're looking at here is snipping in real time. And I'm gonna speed up some of the cutting that you see in this video, but, but what you're looking at right here is real time. I didn't slow it down or anything. So if you're gonna be cutting with your snips, just bring your patience that day. You're gonna need it. The deal with snips is that they can, a lot of times, kind of power over a corner or bent edge or ripple in the metal or something like that. But, you know, not super well. These things do get kind of messy when you hit contours and variations in your sheet metal. They like the flat, level ground. It's pretty widely accepted that roofing and steel siding and trim, you know, all that thin sheet metal, it can definitely be cut with snips, no doubt about it. And the snips are especially useful when you need to form corners and trim pieces and stuff like that. Snips are actually indispensable for detailed cutting work. Now remember earlier I mentioned that you'd wanna have some gloves on, maybe like some cut resistant gloves on. And this is one of the reasons why if you're using hand shears, you end up just kinda up in here, you know, rubbing on this stuff and you know, sometimes it's smooth and sometimes it's jagged. If you're doing this on like a roofing job or something, by the end of the day, you will have slices in like one or two areas on your hands. Not the best cut. I mean, there are little jagged pieces and stuff. For roofing stuff, I've actually used a really big pair before. Big old snips with like a cutter that's like five inches. So each time you're taking, you know, four or five inches instead of like an inch and a half or two inches. And this is some thicker gauge sheet metal. You gotta really like bear down on those snips if you're gonna cut thicker stuff. But there's definitely a limit. So no dice when you come and try to cut like a junction box cover or something thick like this. No problem cutting 
thin aluminum with the old snips. It's just, you know, it's just kind of slow. Snip, 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 little bit at a time. All right, next up, we got the nibbler. So just to be perfectly clear, it's the dealio at the end of the drill that's the nibbler. And it just screws onto your drill, just, you know, like any other drill bit or whatever, but it's a nibbler. And the nibbler pretty much consists of just like a rod that oscillates. That rod just kind of moves back and forth. And there's a little cutting tooth, just a little flat piece at the end of the rod on each side. So it just goes back and forth and nibbles off little teeny half moons of metal. The nibbler is kind of like a punch, you know, it's like punch, 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 just nibbling off little bits. And I gotta say, just right off, that I'm not really like a pro with the nibbler. It's not like my go-to tool. So I did kind of struggle in this demo using the nibbler. You get to the curve and it just won't nibble. It just doesn't really work perfectly for me. It kind of wanders all over and it jammed up a few times. Plus, the deal is you kind of got to work. You kind of got to push. You got to put your back into it to keep that nibbler moving through the material. All right, that might be like the best nibble job I've ever done. It's, it's straight-ish and it pretty much just ate away the line. So, you know, my line was there and it just kind of ate it up. If you are sitting there thinking that you're going to cut your metal roofing, like on that shed job you're doing or the new house you're building or whatever, you think you're going to cut that roofing with a nibbler, just don't. No. No way. Don't do it. It's just not the tool for that kind of job. All right, that's the nibbler on the roofing. I'm just going to kind of give up right there because it's not really that great. The nibblings just end up building up in the nibbler. Even this aluminum kind of gave my nibbler a run for its money. All right, that's enough nibbling. Next up, after the nibbler, thankfully, we're moving on to the power shears. All right, here's your look at the business end of the power shears. They're a lot like snips, but you've got two pieces that you're cutting against. So this is like the cutting edge right here. And it moves just a little. I'm just gonna put my cards on the table right at the start of this power snip demo and say that I really like these power snips. This has been like a go-to tool for me that I've used a lot in cutting sheet metal. So basically, if you're trying to cut on the line, you gotta decide which side of your shear is gonna be the line. So in this case, I'll make the left side of the shear the line. So the amount of material you remove, that little spiral of stuff ends up being a quarter inch. As long as your stuff is on the thinner side, you know, not like plate or whatever, as long as you got actual flexible, pliable sheet, you can get a really immaculate cut. It's a little bit finicky. I'm not saying it's not finicky. You gotta kinda coax the metal in there and you gotta hit it at the right speed. But when it's cutting, it's kind of a thing of metal slicing beauty. So that's your quarter inch pigtail that you lose. And you can see we were hugging the line pretty good. It's pretty accurate on the straights. If your deal is that you got a lot of corrugated metal to cut, you know, like metal that goes up and down, it's not real flat, it's got heaps and ridges and stuff, it does kind of suck getting the power snips up in there and over the ridges. The contours kind of give it fits. Now, you can do it, you can force it most of the time, sometimes, but it really prefers flat ground. Here's that old uh, junction box cover once again. And it's slower, but it'll just cut that thing right up. And you might have been able to see that with the power snips, you kind of got to find like a sweet spot, both in terms of the speed, like you don't want to go too fast, but then also the angle. So you kind of like tip it just right, especially with that thick stuff, and it'll start cutting. All right, you've seen the power snips in action. Let's kick it over to the grinders with two different grinding wheels. All right, now at this point, we are getting into the louder, potentially blinding and deafening and life-threatening tools. So, you know, get your PPE or whatever you call it, get that stuff on and look at that grinder go, especially with the new blade on there. These babies just eat up the steel. 
And this right here is just to illustrate that you can make some, you know, kind of like careful and exacting cuts even when you're using the spinning wheel of death. Now, it's not easy or great for like precision cutting. You know, that's not like it's forte or whatever, but it can, you know, if you're careful and slow and you kind of practice and you got a steady hand, it can stick to the line. And really for roofing applications, you're gonna be cutting like 30, 40 feet of this stuff. You're gonna go through discs and batteries and it's just, it's like a small tool for a big job. All right, so cutting aluminum with the angle grinder, you'll probably notice on your disc, on your fiber disc, that it'll usually say ferrous metals. Like you're only supposed to cut metals that are uh, like magnetic. You know, they got like steel in them and stuff. I'll show you what it's like to cut aluminum with this thing, but you're not really supposed to do it. So it works, but man, this stuff like heats up like crazy and you're not really, you're not really cutting it in the same way. You're just kind of like moving it out of the way, which is when the diamond blade comes in handy. I typically use it on masonry, like tile but you can also use it on metal and PVC and just about anything. It's diamonds, it'll just like hack through anything. Stuff's actually kind of slow going on that thick aluminum. I think I've either dulled my blade in previous use, you know, could have been, or it just kind of sucks on aluminum. Good amount of slag on the bottom. All right, so you've seen the grinders in action. Now it's time for the somewhat less conventional circular saw for cutting sheet metal. And the way you do this, you gotta do this right. You gotta put a plywood blade in here backwards. So, you know, typically the teeth are kind of cutting in this direction since the blade's cutting this way. You put this sucker in backwards, so basically you're gonna be cutting with the back side of the blades on your plywood blade. All right, now, cutting metal with a circular saw is like an inherently sort of messed up thing to do. I mean, it works, but it's kind of crazy. You're not gonna be cutting little things. You're not cutting like little trinkets and whatnot with your circular saw. I would only use this, and actually I have only used this for cutting roofing. Big old long stretches of roofing. Circular saw cut on the metal roofing. I'm telling you man, this in some ways is the way to go. But one thing to know is that you can also get a fiber metal cutting blade for your circular saw. They burn up, but they're good and they're actually made for the job. If you're gonna make these cuts on your roofing, you usually try to bury these guys either under a piece or up under the ridge cap anyway. All right, that is your metal chopping circular saw. Not totally recommended by the manufacturer or anything, but it gets the job done. Next up, we are gonna hit these Oscillating multi tulio type things. All right, so this is the thicker gauge aluminum. Now with these oscillating bad boys, keep in mind that you've got to use a metal cutting blade on there, or at least like a multi-purpose blade, and you will go through some blades. Like it'll eat them up. Softer metals, you know, if you're cutting copper or something, no problem. But I would say that it'll do it. It's just not, you know, like pretty. It's not like the best situation. I'm basically cutting this stuff at an angle like this, just tipping the blade. If you come in at it straight, it gets real jumpy, but if you hit it at the angle, it's better. It's not great, but it's better. And that's the edge before cleaning off any of that shrapnel on the bottom. All right, so that's your Dremel oscillating tool, whatever you want to call it. Uh, moving on, we've got the 
jigsaw set up with the metal cutting blade. And that is the untrimmed edge. You know, if I've never really compared all these guys together at one time, this is actually a cleaner edge. And this clip here is just to show you that the jigsaw, you know, it can kind of get away from you and create some wild as heck vibrations in your material. Now this is that thicker piece of steel. Pretty dang clean. Right, and here's your thick gauge aluminum. Okay, I gotta cut some roofing with the jigsaw just to show you the deal. And to confess, I've actually done this like way too much. And the edge has, you know, like a little bit of action going on. All right, with the jigsaw going back, our lineup is pretty much done. We just need to test the plasma cutter. All right, now typically with the plasma cutter, I would put a straight edge along the cut line just because it'll cut a lot straighter. But since I didn't do that with any of the other tools, I'm just gonna freehand this one too. So we're gonna do plasma cutter straight line freehand on the thick aluminum. Now that's my freehand line. I got a little bit off there. And on the bottom, it'll slag out. That's just how plasma cutters work. I think if I was cutting a little faster, maybe I'd have less slag. All right, once again, freehand got all kind of wiggly. I gotta put a straight edge on this just to do it justice. You really almost never cut anything with a plasma cutter without some kind of guide. All right, so there's your proper plasma cut straight line on the steel, thicker steel. And if you waited around to see if I would cut the roofing with the plasma cutter, it's just not gonna happen. That is just too weird. It's also painted, so it's hard to get a good ground on there and it's just not happened. I don't know anyone who has hauled a plasma cutter around on a roofing job. It just, it's just not right. Like which one of these tools is the best? You know, they each have their place. You know, the plasma cutter is like, irreplaceable in so many situations, so awesome, as is the jigsaw. These guys, so particular, little teeny cuts and stuff. You just can't do that with most of these other tools. This is the ultimate for roofing, etc. on down the line. But if I had to pick one favorite, like, you know, you're on the island, you only have one method of cutting sheet metal, on that island. I'm not sure that's the best example. But anyway, what are we gonna say? What's the best? Well, I'm gonna tell you that the worst is the nibbler. The nibbler sucks. Sorry, nibbler lovers, but I say that's the worst. And I gotta say the most versatile, one tool, all around best has gotta be the angle grinder. For me, I would choose the angle grinder. It's portable, It'll cut like mad, like there's nothing it can't get through. Thick stuff, thin stuff. Sure, it struggles a little bit with aluminum, but I'll cut aluminum with it anyway. So it's an awesome all around tool. I'd really rather not cut a lot of roofing with my angle grinder. I'd rather use my circular saw, and I'd really rather not do fine work that I would rather do with the plasma cutter or the jigsaw. But you can do all that stuff with the angle grinder. So I would say the winner is the angle grinder. All right, thanks for checking out my showdown. I hope you get out there and cut some sheet metal yourself. If you wanna see my other showdown videos, just check out the playlist that this video is part of, man. I've got showdowns of all kinds of tools I use both in the shop and on outside jobs. Also, if you fire off a comment down below, I would love to hear it. There are a couple sheet metal cutting tools I did not include in the showdown. So maybe you could remark on one or two of those and we'd get a little conversation going. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next project.